G'day mate. What do you know? I'm glad you could join me. We're looking today at my new Nikon 500mm lens. It's a um, pretty compact little package as you can see. It doesn't look like a 500mm lens does it? Uh, this is of course the new Nikon PF, the 500mm PF. PF stands for Phase Fresnel. It's a technology that allows you know, Nikon to make their glass a lot smaller and lighter basically. Um, Apparently the other manufacturers have been doing it for a little while, so Nikon sort of caught up with this. Um, I understand there's a 300 PF as well, so this is the 500. Um, as you can see, you know, without the lens hood on, there's a little click here for it, which is not quite nice. Um, I've actually got the, um, the FTZ adapter on it as well, because I've got a mirrorless Z7 to adapt it from the, the F lens to the, the Z series. So that's the size of the lens, it's pretty amazing, isn't it? So yeah, very compact, and that's the um, the main attraction of it, I guess. So yeah, this review, it, it's not a real technical review. We won't go into lots of specifications and all that sort of stuff. That's all online. Um, you'll be able to find that, and you probably know a little bit about it. Anyway, if you clicked on this video, or maybe not, maybe you're just interested in what this lens is, and this might be your first knowledge of it. That's all good. So yeah, this will be a, just a quick little video, pros and cons of this lens, how I find it as a wildlife photographer. Um, a few shots I've shot with it. Um, and what sort of results you can expect out of it and you know usage if, 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 it's, if your usage is similar to mine um, you know, I shoot from a boat for example handheld a lot so it's just it's just great for me this little size shoot all day um, don't need a monopod and a tripod and that sort of stuff um, be good to show you on the body but I'm using my Z7 body to film this so but no all good let's get into it um, we'll go over some pros and cons just my opinions and some shots just to give you an example of what I've done with this lens. Let's jump on the computer now. So this is a summary of my Nikon PF pros and cons. Obviously under the pros it's lightweight, easy to hand hold. I can hand hold it all day for example from my boat on the billabong. It's just great you know flinging it around to follow a bird in flight yeah, not worrying about tripods and monopods and all that sort of stuff. Very nice. Another pro, it's professional build quality. That includes weather sealing as well. So from what I understand, it's up there with the you know the big Nikon Primes. It's a good quality build, an excellent lens that'll last many years if looked after. Another pro is a fast autofocus. Very snappy, noticeably quicker than a lot of the enthusiast lenses, for example, the you know, the Nikon 200 to 500 I've owned, it's quite a bit snappier than that. Perhaps not as snappy as the big primes. I've never actually owned or used a big prime. But um, yeah, definitely very fast and adequate. Obviously, it's got the latest vibration reduction technology. Not sure what we're up to these days. Is it four and a half stops or something like that? But it's very good anyway. Yeah, you can hand hold it, you know, if you need to. It, you know, one sixtieth of a second, I've even got some good shots. And I can be pretty confident of getting a keeper tack sharp depending on the conditions and that sort of stuff and yeah the general sharpness of the lens is uh, you know it's a professional level of sharpness perhaps again you know if you're looking at charts and pixel peeping you know the big primes might be a touch sharper but this certainly will give you no concerns of the sharpness this image in the background is taken with that lens we'll get onto some images in a bit and another pro yeah it does work with teleconverters so that's another advantage for example the zooms and the Enthusiast lenses don't play so well with them, but this will work quite well with a teleconverter. Be it with a few limitations, which we'll get on to in the cons. Starting with the cons, the price, I guess, is quite a big con for many people. Yeah, sure, it's half the, um, you know, the price or less of a big prime Nikon, but it's still a lot of money for an enthusiast shooter, for example. It's two or three times the amount of the Nikon 200 to 500. It is a big outlay. I guess another con is that it's a fixed focal length. It is just 500mm focal length. It's not a zoom. Uh, you know, that can be an advantage as well, of course, because that means it, you know, it is lighter and sharper and perhaps you know, the autofocus works better because of that. But yeah, obviously not as versatile. I guess one of the big cons to me, although it's something I'm pretty used to, unfortunately, is that, you know, the f5.6 maximum aperture. And this is really only a disadvantage in compared to you know, the high-end big primes and professional lenses. It's not so much compared to a lot of, a lot of the other enthusiast lenses because you know, you're probably not going to get more than 5.6 aperture anyway. So this has all sorts of disadvantages. You know, the speed is the, the most obvious one. You know, if you had a, a 400 2.8, for example, you're getting four times the, the light through the lens. 
know, that could be in a difference you know, ISO 1600 compared to 6400 you're trying to get a, you know, a bird landing into the water you know, in low light or something in the evening so basically yeah, 6400s are no deal for me I wouldn't even bother but yeah it means you can actually get those shots potentially another thing with the the aperture the bokeh or the subject isolation I guess again this photo in the background here is actually taken with that lens so you can get some good subject isolation but we'll get onto that when we look at these pictures this will be one of the pictures we look at but it's just not to the same extent and it's not as easy but yeah we'll get onto some details there autofocus is actually disadvantage by that aperture 5.6 you're getting less light through the lens so the camera isn't able to you know, pick out subjects and, and track subjects as easily when the when it's a darker image that your maximum aperture is and also when you put a teleconverter on the 1.4 you're at f8 then and autofocus is even a bigger issue you know so is your speed and that sort of thing i find on my nikon z7 for example not a great action camera in regards to autofocus anyway with a teleconverter on yeah don't bother <laughs> any sort of action autofocus um, it, it's okay to lock onto a, a still subject but even that can be a bit tricky when the light's low it's not the best at f8 we've got another con there or disadvantage not a big one that's why i put the asterisk next to it the actual phase fresnel technology itself i've had a few images where you know if i've got some real harsh light i'm pointing the lens straight at it can cause some issues it seems uh, i don't think this is a big issue because i rarely see it and it's only probably when i shouldn't have bothered taking a photo anyway you know it's either the light is that harsh you know due to the time of day whatever you're not going to get a nice photo anyway but yeah it's just something to keep in mind but again we'll go over these images and I'll show you some examples of you know where this lens has really worked for me and perhaps where it hasn't but overall yeah great lens I love it I'm glad I got it no regrets there for sure all right let's go over and have a look at, look at a few images I've taken with it I've owned this lens for about six weeks okay so we're now in Adobe Lightroom and just got a few selected images here um, yeah basically a selection of you know some some of my favorite images with this lens but also just some images you know, that might not be that good but just you know might demonstrate the perf performance of this lens or things to look out for or just to highlight some of those pros and cons that I mentioned before see these are in chronological order um, and let's get into it the first one is just a um, bit of a macro I guess uh, just as an example probably I could have mentioned this in the cons actually um, this dragonfly must have been at least three meters away or, or 10 feet because that's the minimum focal distance of this lens uh, which isn't great it's, it's not too bad of course but yeah i think some of it, some of its peers the uh, even the 200 to 500 zoom from nikon focuses closer and, and some of the big primes so yeah nothing to write home about uh, but you can get some nice macro shots uh, but yeah nice detail in the wings and all that um, this was taken with a tele converter I believe um, yeah 700 mil f8 wide open with the tele converter um, ISO 200 don't think this one was cropped too much let's have a look um, yeah it was a little bit never mind give you an idea um, our next image taken the same day actually this is I think this is my first day out with the lens actually I called into this billabong on the way home from work a couple of sh uh, Raja shell ducks these are called um, this one must be fairly heavily cropped because I'm not getting much zoom in there that's 100 percent so yeah with the teleconverter as well um, fairly heavily cropped um, the background there you can see um, with the teleconverted f8 because these were fairly distant even though that the background was fairly distant and I got a fairly low level a low angle at the the birds it's still not smooth buttery bokeh as you can see but not too bad um, and yeah quite good detail and everything in the eyes and feathers of the birds okay this is another day quite a bright sunny day this is a blue winged kookaburra um, the sort we get up in the top end of Australia in the tropical north we don't actually get the laughing kookaburra we get this one this one still has a bit of a chuckle um, but not quite the amazing laugh of his um, cousin down south um, the, the, the laughing kookaburra has more just brown sort of wings um, yeah but yeah quite happy with the shot some really good detail on the feathers again with the tele converter 
Uh, yeah, you can see the detail in the feathers and the beak, you know, the scratches on the beak and the eye. Quite good detail. Um, again, you know, the background I wouldn't say is great. The out of focus elements uh, were at f8. It's a little bit busy, but yeah, quite a pleasing shot. All the same, uh, we're at ISO 100, um, f8 wide open, 1320th of a second. Um, now this shot here, it's not much of a photograph. It's more for um, demonstration. This one, um, yeah, basically it's a buffalo running away. He's not even in focus, as you can see. Um, but yeah, you may recall in my pros and cons I mentioned sometimes you will get issues you know with the phase fresnel and and I, I expect this must be um, due to that but yeah certainly correct me if I'm wrong in the comments uh, but yeah basically very this is taken at 10 30 10 30 in the morning very hot in Darwin this time of year you know, be getting towards 40 degrees Celsius not sure what that is in Fahrenheit but um yeah black soil plane really hot air um, looks like this tree here is in focus so the buffalo is a bit out of focus, but what I really want to highlight in this image is the background, which is, should be even more out of focus, uh, and it is. But just this this weird patchwork, I guess, of lines. Um, we've got quite white, uh, white trees because they're um, paper barks. There's been a fire through there, so they're white and black, so very contrasty. But we get these weird, sharp, spidery lines everywhere um, in the background. Quite a weird look. Uh, I could zoom in three to one here and. They don't look quite as sharp there, but you, you get to, to see what I'm talking about there. It's quite a weird effect. Um, again, I shoot you know into the bright light a lot with this lens. I don't normally see any issues. I think this is just the recipe here. You know, really hot time of the day. Wouldn't normally be looking for a, a good image. Um, I just happened to see these buffalo on the bank and jumped out of the boat to get a photo. Um, so yeah, not something that concerns me at all. Uh, I can't remember the name of this little fella. Um, whoop, we're in three to one there, but yeah, this is taken with the tally converter as well. 100% um, there, wide open, um, ISO 400. But yeah, you can just see the, the really beautiful detail there. You certainly got no concerns of sharpness, even even with the tally converter wide open. Um, you know, obviously, I'll probably sharpen these a bit, but you've got to have some good detail to, to play with to sharpen those. And yeah, happy with that sort of quality. Because uh, I got fairly close to this guy, let's see how crop this is. Yeah, not you know he's a tiny bird, so not a real heavy crop, I guess, for such a tiny bird. I was able to get some nice, pleasing bokeh in this. You know, the out of focus elements in the background wasn't too bad. Uh, these are a pair of black-winged stilts or pied stilts. Um, again, no, this is without the teleconverter, wide open at f5.6. And yeah, you can just see some lovely detail there. Um, plenty of sharpness, certainly nothing to, to worry about. You see there's some water droplets even there in the mid-air dropping off his beak. Um, yeah, you know, the, the background is quite pleasing. Um, you know, his mate there's just a nice soft focus there. Not too bad. Um, certainly not the, um, the creamy smooth background you might get with a big prime, F4 or F2.8. Um, this one's a little bit cropped, but yeah, so, but I was fairly close to the birds. Uh, a bit of a different shot, certainly shooting in a bright light, as you can see. This is with the D500, actually. I don't actually own one. I borrowed my sister's one this day. Um, but yeah, just to give you a bit of a different sort of looking shot. Um, but yeah, cert you know, certainly no trouble shooting into bright highlights that most of the time. Um, and yeah, this has just rendered this quite beautifully. Uh, saw saw all these hawks on the tree on this dead tree on the way to one of my favourite spots. Um, don't think this one will be cropped much at all. Actually, yeah, I've just taken out some of the distracting branches and twigs on the left edge there. Um, but yeah, certainly no problems with that sort of subject shooting into the sun when it's fairly low. Okay, we've got a royal spoonbill here. Um, what do we got here? ISO 640, 1, 1, 2, 50 for the second, wide, wide open, no teleconverter. Um, yeah, really happy with these low light shots. Um, you can just see the, the beautiful detail in the rendering uh, in the feathers here in this you know, early morning golden hour shot. You know, it just renders it beautifully, the shades. 
Um, his legs are just sharp, a little bit of motion blur in the foot, which is fine, but it's just so much detail. Um, yeah, pretty close to this guy. Um, out of focus background, quite pleasing. Um, again, not what you're going to get with a big prime, but yeah, quite acceptable that one. Um, now this one's probably a good example of one to look at compared to a big prime because this is a big bird. This is a jabiru we call him, or black neck stork, I think is his proper name. He's fairly distant because he's so big. He, I don't know, he probably stands you know, 1.6 meters tall or something. Yeah, maybe five foot tall. I'm not sure. Um, so yeah, he's not as close. And even though the background's quite distant, you know, that could be, um, you know, hundreds of meters away. Uh, it's still quite busy. Having said that, yeah, showing a, an animal's environment, you know, isn't such a bad thing. I think maybe that foreground and grass and all that's a little bit distracting, but I don't mind this shot. Um, but yeah, it's probably a good example of, you know, if you, if you had the big glass here for 2.8, you could probably isolate this a bit more if you wanted to, or you could definitely. Um, still lovely sharpness. This is the uh, female Jabiru. It's got the golden eye. The male has the dark eye, it's slightly bigger. Um, yeah, so still really happy with the, you know, the quality and all that. And like I said, showing a bit of the bird's environment is probably not such a bad thing personal taste looks like she doesn't always get her leg out the way when she goes to the toilet <laughs> I assume that's what that is um, but yeah so very happy with the shot still but good example of maybe the difference between this and a, the big primes here yeah. um, this is the same day I believe this is from a boat in a in a billabong same as that last shot this is a uh, white-bellied sea eagle just you know early morning as well beautiful light um, you know again you've just got this beautiful detail it just it's just at such a beautiful lens you can see the detail in the talons and the bark and his feathers this is uh what have we got here we're wide open f5.6 yeah one two thousandth of a second iso 720. his face there might be just a touch out of focus i probably focus on his breast but yeah it, it's definitely a keeper for me this one just a beautiful early morning blue sky and those golden leaves it's just a burnt tree we don't have autumn here um yeah, so happy with that one as well. This is the uh, one we used for the background before. Um, you know, again, we've already touched on this. It's just you know, really nice sharpness. Very happy with this lens. Um, you, know, you can just see these lines in his legs um, and his big toes. This is a jacana, big feet for walking on lilies. We call them Jesus birds. They don't really walk on water, but they, they do seem to. Um, yeah, again, the background's quite pleasing. You can see the lily you know the lily shapes and that sort of stuff in the background but um again i guess if you really wanted to blur that background you, you'd need the big prime this is wide open uh on the on the 500 no tally converter uh yeah really like these shots got down early morning the sun was just coming up behind me quite a dewy morning you can see a bit of water on the grass and yeah loved how it rendered um, these images early morning got a couple of these uh, and again, I'm ha quite happy to see a bit of this background, the environment. Uh, you yeah, maybe if I did have a big prime, maybe I would have sh you know, stopped it down a little bit to get some of that background anyway. So quite pleasing grass and reeds, and you know, just showing the bird's environment again. Um, beautiful soft light, and and again, you know, no problem with sharpness. Um, these are all handheld. Um, this one I, I was in my little portable hide. I wound down the shutter speed a bit for this one just because he was fairly still. So ISO 280, I think that is. Uh, wide open, 500 mil, yeah. So yeah, beautiful colours in that low light image. Another Raja shell duck, same morning. And again, you can just see the, the detail there. Um, ISO 800, this one's a little bit noisy, but still a beautiful image. Um, wide open again. 132. One thirty-two hundredth of a second, so it was enough to freeze those droplets coming out of his bill there. Um, same morning, yeah, I had this heron fly in and land. Um, light was getting a bit brighter now. What am I at here? Uh, I'd say five hundred. So yeah, um, one thirty-two hundredth of a second again, wide open. Um, you know, with the Z7, it's not known to be the you know the, the greatest action camera for autofocus but i find i'm fine with this lens especially with these bigger birds you know they don't move that quick um 
took a little bit to get used to perhaps but um, now I'm used to the, the electronic viewfinder and that sort of thing I can track these bigger birds quite good um, as I said with the tally converter on it's not quite as good can be a bit frustrating hit and miss um, and it's even hit and miss without it I guess compared to you know like a, a D500 or um, you know one of the DSLRs um, but yeah I normally have a pretty good hit rate with those so again yeah lovely rendering of this image with that lens quite a good background a little bit of noise here I guess with some trees and but just great detail again in the feathers and all that sort of stuff but yeah very happy um, this is an interesting one from a boat uh, this is an azure kingfisher um, really happy with the image haven't got very many good photos of these guys up close so I was happy to get fairly close to this one it's fairly cropped this one uh, what are we at here so yeah fairly big crop just to one day I'll get a bit closer hopefully and but he's really in the sh shade here and some really you know quite a lot of um, dark foliage sun behind him very challenging conditions from a boat trying to trying to get him um, but yeah the, the incredible thing about this shot um, is that it was shot at 1 30th of a second um, I did take the risk like I got a few shots of him first at a higher ISO and I just thought look I'm going to wind it down a bit so what do I go down to one ISO 280 there so yeah whammy shutter speed down to 1 30th of a second uh, I don't think I realized at the time I went that slow that's probably a bit silly but I did actually get a couple of sharp keepers you know I probably took you know half a dozen shots at this time and maybe one or two of those you know it's just tack sharp so it's a real testament to the VR technology um, from a moving boat uh, 1 30 for the second so yeah very happy with that one um, again no tally converter wide open that one uh, this saltwater crocodile was on the same billabong these are at Kakadu by the way Kakadu National Park you may may have heard of fairly world renowned this is on yellow waters near Kawinda so yeah this guy um, was on the bank it's quite a hazy overcast day this morning actually and, and it really got a nice sort of diffused look here um, I tried to get my wife to stand nearby with a, um, an umbrella but she wouldn't do that for some reason but no this is um, just a lovely you know example of you know the sharpness again um, maybe I could have tried you know shut closing down the aperture a bit to get his nose more in focus and that sort of stuff yeah just really good detail there um, what are we there when we're 160 well, 160 40th of a second ISO 1250 wide open again yeah so yeah uh, this was a water buffalo that came down to the bank uh, again shooting him from the boat it, you know dark foliage he came out into the sunlight for me um, not a very challenging photo this one of course <laughs> they don't move that quick um, but again yeah just to highlight you know the sharpness it's just beautiful um, yeah you know you can see the lines on his nose you know, eyelashes and um, some of these water droplets may be a little bit out of focus just on a slightly different plane than you know where I focused on his eye but um, yeah just just incredible detail again so certainly no complaints there um, actually took this photo this morning uh, 2nd of January 2020 uh, got fairly close to this goose this is from my little portable hide again a um, bit of a comical photo this one I thought he's acting a bit of a goose but <laughs> he seemed to be um, yeah swinging his head around getting a mouthful of water I don't know what he's doing but washing his mouth out or something uh, but again yeah you know just just the detail and all that um, ISO 1250 1 hundredth of a second uh, was good enough to really freeze him freeze the action there um, and I think we're at the end of our images there so yeah so that's hopefully a good selection of images just to give you an idea of you know what I'm using the lens for um, what you know you might expect out of this lens I, I guess you know the main question is you know would I recommend it and it's probably fairly obvious that I would uh, it, it is a really good little lens um, as mentioned you know, its main advantage I guess is its portability you know I, I can just swing it around on a boat following birds in flight I can hold it up all day 
um, and it's just you know so versatile for that reason and the quality is really there you know it's it's professional levels of sharpness um, you know build quality um, you know it's auto focus and vibration reduction technology all those sort of things are right there and it's really you know the only disadvantage really I guess you know if you really want to get that smooth creamy buttery bokeh um, yeah you know, you're going to need a big prime or if you do need those couple of stop you know an extra stop or two of speed which I would love at times you know sometimes those early morning shots um, you know this one here for example if he was flying in and landing with a splash I would have found it hard to freeze him in this light with a 5.6 lens you know but 2.8 you know it's four times as much light so I could use a shutter speed you know one fourth of that whatever I use on that so that can be the difference but otherwise yeah it's just a beautiful lens and certainly recommend it okay well that's the end of this little review video I probably waffled on a bit longer than I meant to but uh, hopefully you found it helpful um, yeah I'm very new to this YouTube stuff so yeah would love it if you would subscribe like the video um, yeah that would just help me get going I guess um, certainly you know leave any comments or um, questions in the uh, comments below and I'll endeavor to get back to you um, but yeah stay tuned for further videos I'll be really keen just to um, you know take you along with me show you how to uh, get these shots you know how to get close to wildlife what settings to use and you know, just different strategies I have um, and how to improve your photography be a lot of fun um, also um, yeah even you know when we get back to the computer how do I edit my images to get the most out of them um, how do I manage images store them and all that sort of stuff so yeah um, yeah be really happy to share some of my experience and all that so yeah stay tuned and yeah please subscribe I'll see you next time and just as I close out now here's a little bit of video um, taken with the 500 pf lens also haven't tried much video with my Z7 um, but yeah, it seems to work really well. Alright, goodbye again. Until next time, cheers.